So is Ross McFarlane going to make his breakthrough victory on the European Tour, or will Anders Forsbrand return to the winner's rostrum? The answer, as they say, blowing in the wind. Swede one behind at five under, tee shot at 16. With a pin on the left and the wind coming from the left so hard to work the ball into the flag. And they've got a very hard bounce. Just pitch right on the top of the knoll. And McFarlane cutting his tee shot away to the right at 17. Means he can't get up in two, just laying up now with a seven iron. Just into the first cut of semi rough, but a good angle into the pin. Falls Brand's had a bit of a charge for his birdie, so this to save part. Virtually dead straight. And another good saving putt. One at 14 and 16, the par three, so he remains at five under, and the 17th certainly in range for him. And just about in range for Brand Jr. as well, out with the fairway wood. And that just headed a little left. Well, he had enough club, but into the trap. Yes, an awkward up and down from there, a little ridge to come. Up and over. Good rounds from Robert Annaby and Katsuyoshi Tomori. Top ten finishes, perhaps, but McFarland still hanging on. One shot lead. What wouldn't he give for an up and down from here? Very nicely controlled coming out of the rough. It was always going to be difficult to attack the flag. Ross McFarlane, a great joke teller, got some lovely tricks. My son still talks of the dinner they had with him. And the pranks. But now, all he's looking for is a birdie four. Around the sad magic trip for Thomas Bjorn, who's disappeared off the leaderboard. Five over today. And then a, a rare breakthrough for the Dane. Of course, Ryder Cup points, still important. He still has a chance of a top four or five finish. A nice upslope lie, and just pitching straight into the tier. Pretty well played. Just needed to carry another two or three feet, and that would have been very adjacent to the flag. Now, yet again, and he's had. Three in a row about this length or a little shorter. Does he attack or does he settle for a par, consolidate? Well, he was trying to hold that, make no mistake. But is it going to be a good five again for McFarlane? One hole closer, one to play. Well, he won't be taking any prisoners here. He was trying to hit a little too hard, he's drifting right. I well, nearly took our camera tower out and has landed very close and he may need to get a ruling, to get a drop. Brand for his four. Just a move to five under. And he's done it. He has done it. So he's just one behind going into the closing hole. Well, Force Brand indeed did get his free drop line of sight and second. Again, not holding back. And he is all or nothing now and he finds Brand's bunker, but had enough club, couldn't quite slide it round that front bunker enough. It's almost a match play situation at 18 between McFarlane and Brand Jr. The important thing for Gordon is to get his blow away safely in the middle of the fairway. Got one of these old metal drivers, Steve, which 
The head looks the size of a pea. Well, certainly compared to the new ones out there. I don't know how they lift it, let alone swing it. Brown Jr. who likes to draw the ball. This sets up very nicely the 18th. 450 yards, but the breeze helping today. And that's exactly what Brown Jr. had to do. He's safely on. He's opened up the pin. And he's asking the question of Ross McFarlane. Banish all those thoughts of Jersey in 88, of Forest of Arden last year when he left his tee shot at the par three across the lake, fatally short. Just one good swing. You're making me nervous, Steve. Well, it's a big moment for Ross McFarlane. I'm trying not to think of the money, but when he was leading or up with the leaders at the halfway stage of the Benson Hedges, he was described as a veteran journeyman. I think that hurt a little. Again, having problems with a little tear. And that was a gem of a tee shot for Ross McFarlane, long and straight. I think fair to say he's a little pumped up at the moment. Slightly misjudging the breeze. You can see how it's swirling from behind and then from right to left. And having seen that, you can bet that McFarlane will want to make sure that he's firmly on the green. The pin cut quite close to the front edge and just behind will do nicely. Just like that. It was as near perfect as you can possibly get. He's put a bit of lead on his irons this week, moved the swing weight up from D0 to D3, and he's just enabled him to feel the club head through the ball. And he has played some delightful shots in these closing holes under a lot of pressure. So maybe more pressure to come. Force Brown with a putt to tie the lead. Told a number of good ones today, but that one, in the circumstances, just a little too tentative. Should have got it up to the hole, at least. He's misjudged the pace on a number of putts. 11, he was a long way short. 16, he belted it six feet by. And from that sort of range, in this sort of situation, he didn't ought to have left it short, and he knows it. Well, this chip surely has to go in for Gordon Brown, Jr. And he too, when he needed to be up to the hole, found wanting. Well, it hasn't been a day of spectacular scoring, but it's been enthralling. And it may just be a, a day that Ross McFarlane will remember for the rest of his life. Certainly if he pops this one in, I think we can give him the trophy. This for seven under. Now again, that never really had the pace to hold the line, but the shortest of tap-ins to set the target at six under. And now only Force Brown can deny him. He needs a birdie at the last to force a playoff. Terrific round under the fiercest of pressure from Ross McFarland, and what a comeback from that double bogey at 10. He could have just fallen away into the pack, but he came back with three birdies in a row and then held on to his game to set that target. Now a big putt for Brand Jr. Beautifully done, so he's in at five under par. And that'll be worth a bit of boodle by the close of play today. It's especially for a man who's won less than £8,000 so far this season. Anders Forsbrand back on the tee, looking to unleash a monster over that tree on the centre of your screen. Oh, he really has 
just cut the corner of the dog leg off. And it's a bit further than that, I think. But has it found the fairway? And just brings that left hand bunker guarding the pin into play. It's the prize fund, three quarters of a million pounds, and the top prize, 125,000. Is that check going to Ross McFarland? Because that one should be here. Watch. Should be coming that way. Big money for all the top ten finishers. And Paul McGinley, yeah, who really needed a couple of late birdies on Friday to make the cut, 66 yesterday, and he's hung on well despite a poor start to his final round. Yes, bogey at the first and double bogey at the fourth were killer blows, but he's battled on on the back nine. Birdies at 15 and 17. And that is a beautifully controlled shot coming out of the rough. He'll have that to tie his fellow Irishman Darren Clark at four under. Well, it's not an easy shot for Anders Forsbrand, but he's got a big, powerful swing. He may get some control on it. Oh, that's magnificent to be able to carry it over the bunker like that and stop the ball quickly. He must have just pitched on a little bit of an upslope, but uh, he needed a good break now and again. That was beautifully controlled. Well, everybody out of hospitality where the wind has been flapping about. Those aren't towels on there, that's the uh, tablecloths. Everybody's around the 18th waiting to see the climax of this Deutsche Bank Open. It's not for injured golfers, is it? <laughs> They've been one or two this week, haven't they? And one or two battered egos. And this is for Paul McGinley's 19th birdie of the week. This will be for more than anybody else. A good judge of pace, but I'll have to settle for 285, three under. There's uh, McFarlane. He's bound to be a little anxious now. Force Brown really has given himself a chance of forcing a playoff. A fine four for Paul McGinley, and despite two double bogeys on his card, the fourth and the twelfth, a good closing stretch of four holes, and he managed to get round in 74. But after missing his last two cuts, he's back on the right track. Six wins in Europe for Anders Force Brown, but he's been in three playoffs and lost the lot, but this two force extra holes at Goot Carden. On its way, has he hit it? Oh! Well, agony for Force Brand as wife Stuart looks on. He can't believe it. He had chances at 17 and 18. And that putt seemed to go from the centre of the hole with a foot to go right across the front of it. So a share of second place for Anders Force Brand at 73. Misery for Anders. But for Fantastic. Ross McFarlane, ecstasy. They won't call him a veteran journeyman anymore. Thomas Bjorn and Howard Clark both finished shared ninth at two under. But the man of the moment, Ross McFarlane, a day he'll never forget. This is so sweet. After all this time, the victory is, is sweeter than anything else. I do a check for £125,000 will help the celebrations along. And that moves McFarland into number seven on the Volvo rankings. Bernhard Langer missing the cut, staying at number two. Number one place, Ian Woosnam, after that fabulous win at Wentworth the previous week. And Woosnam knows he'll be at Valderrama for the Ryder Cup by Johnny Walker. Now knows he'll be joined by Darren Clark after the Irishman's fourth place. McFarland in there at 17th. You never know, but for the moment, this week will do nicely.